So even though even though the video of this event exists and and from the look on my face, you couldn't tell that it was going to be uh, one of the the happiest moments or best memories I've ever had. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right, Skiz, last time we did a Q&A session, we had a couple pages printed off of questions and we got through one. So we said yeah. we'll do it again sometime. And here we are like four yeah. or five weeks later. It was so much fun. Yeah. I'm, I've been looking forward to this. I, I, yeah, I felt really bad because we, we yes. picked out all these questions. There was a lot of questions submitted. We picked out a bunch and we didn't get to them. Yeah. And I felt bad because people didn't get their questions answered. So here we are. We're back and we got a list of questions. <laughs> and it? it's just a little Q&A. And uh, the first one's actually going right at you, buddy. Uh, it's from JP says, my question for Skiz, since you had kids pretty young, how did you feel when you first found out from your wife or at that time your girlfriend that she was pregnant? Did you feel you were ready for it? Ooh, boy, yeah, we're, we're hitting the Dumping right in the deep end. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, let me see. So that's, that's, that's a great question. And it's not, this is not a, yes, I was ready. No, I wasn't ready. It's not that simple. Right. And, and I, do you remember being kids? It's, I thought about doing a going deep with this and maybe I think this might be a potential future podcast but remember playing tag when we were kids and there was somebody would hide or they would they would not tag i'm sorry hide and seek mm -hmm. somebody would go into a corner uh cover their eyes and they would count out loud to 100 or whatever it was and now it's time for them to go find who they're gonna who they're gonna get and what did they always say right before they went on the hunt ready or not here, here i come. come that's right mm -hmm. and that is to me that's like a metaphor for life in general right there's <laughs> you can you can be wherever you're at and sometimes life's like um Ready or not, here I come, something's coming. So this was kind of that situation. So did I feel ready? No, I was very young. I didn't feel ready, but I remember even at that age, I remember being like, well, ready or not, here it comes. It doesn't matter that yeah. I'm not ready. This is happening. And 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 uh, so now what I've got to do is just get my head wrapped around it. And I think, <clears throat> I would say it, it took me longer than it should have to kind of course correct some things. Like I said, I was coming, I was going to school for the wrong thing at the time. I needed to shift that around and, and, and items like that and, and get, um, much less selfish. I was a pretty selfish person. I had to get much less selfish. And, and once, once my son was born, all that came super easy. Right. So I, I, I bring that up as in, no, I would not say I was ready, but ready or not, here I come. And I was, I, I was arguably because I kind of had this demeanor of I'm, I'm ready for anything. I was, sort of ready for it but not quite that yeah. <laughs> that was uh that was a tough one but it was ready or not here i come but um i'm i have I'm not not a single regret as you can imagine oh of course yeah, yeah. Course parenting yeah. is such a great gift oh yeah okay yeah um you know i i we ended up having kids fairly young too me and my wife you did like she missed her week of finals like her very last thing at, at college because she was giving birth. So that's like, no didn't excuse. Quite, didn't quite, I know, right? <laughs> they can't take your finals whilst in labor. What's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we. <laughs> that's a heck of a final exam right we, there. We got after it quick, too, but not not nearly as quick as you. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Early. Let's let's keep going. Okay. So, next one is from Merlin. It says, I struggle a lot with anxiety, as many people do. My question to you both is how do you both individually handle it? Uh, are there any tricks you have learned over the years that work for you? <laughs> Very good. Very I can good. jump in this. Yeah, go ahead. Because, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I pretty open about the fact that I do have quite a, a good deal of anxiety. And uh, you constantly reference the fact that I never leave my house. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's partially because of that, right? Um, but one thing that I found and in, in recently went on this 10-day this vacation, I, I was pretty vocal about the fact that I had a lot of anxiety building up to uh, this idea of going on a vacation, traveling across the country, getting on a cruise ship, um, making sure that everything was in order, you know, that we weren't going to you know, be late for a flight and that we had rental cars and everything lined up. And my wife, um, my wife knew that, that I had this anxiety. So I, I, I'm lucky to have her. Let me just say that because she made sure everything was taken care of. She had like an itinerary to the minute uh, and had everything completely pre-planned out and knew that if she put that in front of me and I read through it, that that would uh, alleviate some of this anxiety that I had because I knew that it was all taken care of and that, that it was going to be, everything was going to be fine. But even then building up to the point to where it's like time to go, it, 
it, it's it's people like her that I have by my side and people like you as well that just give me that like little push that I need because a lot of times I'll just be like, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to go out. I don't want to be around people. And, and then she'll just be like, no, we're going, come on. And then the second we're out the door, I realize, oh, this is great. Like I, I would have missed out on, on all this if I had just <clears throat> stayed locked inside. So um, it's it's just having that realization, I think, that and like pulling those memories of times where I literally one did not want to face my anxiety, but somebody pushed me to do it. And then realizing that, hey, I got on the other side of that and I was grateful. So maybe I should push myself next time okay. and not just rely on somebody to pull me out, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's good. I, so we have to, let's get leveled on what an anxiety is, right? It's uh, my understanding. It's, it's, it's sort of just the, the worry of, of the, the potential negative future. I mean, that's kind of really reductive sure. to say it that way, but it's, it's worrying about stuff that it has not happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it's happened, it's not anxiety anymore. It's just something sucks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But when you worry about something that has not even happened, that's like, that's, that's the mind kind of going into this weird protective mode and just keeping you from uh, experiences is like, like you're saying. Right. And, and, and I think it's more than just like, now you can experience things, but you have to learn on what it is to deal specifically with anxiety when your body starts to take over. And, and I'm probably should have talked to you about this beforehand, but you, you had yourself a little panic attack many years ago, many years oh, ago, yeah. many years ago, you had kind of taken on too much or whatever. Yep. And I don't know if that was anxiety driven, but I think that had a, a played a part in it because <clears throat> essentially you were um, juggling so many balls at once that you started to panic about the moment one of them was going to eventually hit the floor yep. and you can't, you not, that's not in no. your wheelhouse. Failure is not a thing for you. And that you were like, I can't keep all these afloat and it started to give you some anxiety, some anxiety and, and um, you had yourself a little panic. Yeah. I ended and, up in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a bad time. Right. So that, that the way I deal with it, cause I'm not, I'm not a whole lot different. I, we all deal with anxiety. Uh, uh, boy, it's hard to say. It, it is, it is, I kind of go into this zone of, cause even when I'm going to travel, right. I, I don't, I was traveling for a while there and traveling does bring a little bit of anxiety. There's so much that can go wrong. There's, mm -hmm. there's, especially with connecting flights. That's the thing that scares me the most. That second flight, you know, the first fl flight being so delayed, you can't make the second one and the second one getting canceled altogether. Like you, this stuff happens all the time. And I'm just don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that, but this is what I do. I ask myself, okay. Is there a world where I can make these flights more reliable? Uh, this is this is quite literally how I handle it. Can I make the flights more? I mean, can I go work for the airline and and be in charge of how reliable their flights are? No, I can't do that. Okay, next question: Am I not going to go on this trip? No, I'm going to go on this trip. Well, I'm done thinking about it. This, this is what I'm doing now. Yeah. Like it sounds super like simplistic, and it's not that easy. But if you if you realize. It actually is that easy. Really, really be aware of what it is you actually have control over and then control those things. Yeah. You control those things. Then you realize all the things that are completely out of your control, you have to make a deliberate effort to let go of them because you can't do anything about it. Right. There's times at work where I do, I mean, I still get overwhelmed at work. Every day, every day at work is a giant list of uh, everything I got going on. And there are times where I'll be running a huge project or whatever it is, and I start to feel anxiety and based on how it, how the project is going and I will stop. Now this is a tool set I use. This is, this is a very deliberately answering this question. I will stop and I will open up a word document and I will type in all the things that make me uncomfortable about what's in front of me. I don't like that. I don't know what the budget is. Okay. Check. I don't like the fact that the requirements are not clear. Okay. Check. I don't like the fact that we're going to lose a couple of resources. Okay. Check. All right. Let's go to the first one. Uh, I don't know what the first one was, but oh, the budget thing. Let's get some clarity on that. I'm, I'm, my life is about is about understanding this budget right now. Okay, got that? Okay, let's go to the next one. I go to the next one, uh, the requirements. Okay, I'm going to set up a session. We are going to talk just about requirements and, and success criteria and nothing else. And that session is not going to be over until we have those answers. Okay, check on the next one. Next thing I know, the anxiety I was feeling was only because I was being overwhelmed with ambiguity. I was able to... Right address what it was and go own it. Now, if it came down to, oh, I'm afraid a meteor is going to hit me in the head. Okay. Well, I can't control that. All right. Next. You know what I mean? That <laughs> it can move on. So that's, you can't, anxiety has the um, ability to really, uh, uh, to, to reverse the, 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 like you are the, the person riding the horse. Don't let the horse ride you. Don't let it yeah. tell you where you're going. You're in charge, okay. you know? So that's, you got to get delivered. Yeah. On one that. thing, uh, when we talked about this, cause I'd 
told you that I had anxiety about the the trip was you'd kind of mentioned like, oh, yeah, I used to get travel anxiety, too. But then as I did it more and more because the job kind of forced you to do it, like next thing you know, it was like an old hat. You, you were just like, oh, cool. All right. Grab my bag. Yeah. Get, get through security. No problem. You know, it sucks. Got to kick off the shoes and all this. But I got it down. You know, like you start to you start to get more comfortable with the things that you had anxiety about. You know, it's like uh, anytime it's like oh, we're going to go to a new place that I've never been before start to get some anxiety but then we go first time get through it okay that was cool go a second time next thing you know it's like yeah you want to go there of course i want to go there yeah i'm totally comfortable with it i know exactly what to expect like the first time might be a little uncomfortable but once you get past that it's it gets it gets easier and easier yeah you know it does you're right it's like repetition and just kind of dealing with the unknown and and getting that skill set it's just all part of like you know growing and moving past it yeah it can go the other way too like Uh, it it, it, like if you if you don't face it right it's just going to build it's going to get worse and worse like if if i never did leave the house you know never did take that step out the door and just said i don't want to face it i can't face it like that anxiety is just going to continue to grow to the point to where it's going to be crippling Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and And so you got to dive in yeah you know what's funny is when i used to do a lot of performing i don't know if you ever saw a live performance of like the trash can trio i used to do the the drumming Mm -hmm. thing um you know, you always get a little bit of performance anxiety and it was so, it was so it's, you got to kind of dive into it. And I remember one specific moment, me and my two buddies were behind the curtain. It was a, it was a packed house and we were behind the curtain and they were, you could hear the, uh, the announcer announcing us that we were about to come out and the crowd, they knew what was coming. So they're starting to get excited and he's starting to announce it. And I'm really excited about this. And I realize. Oh boy, this butterflies in my stomach are real. Like all of a sudden, my brain's like, "Dude, you're gonna you're gonna screw this whole thing up. You're gonna mess it all up. All these people are gonna see this, and you, and and you're live in three, two, curtains open. You know." And I'm just like, "But I realized I ah, just just march forward. I'm here's I'm not gonna turn around and leave the stage. So right. this is my life now. And it was a great show. Like my point being that you just sometimes you have to be at peace with the fact that there will be some discomfort and just 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 dive in. Yeah. You no, know? I wanted to say that too. Like all the things I was worried about. You know. Oh. Uh-huh missing the missing the flight or, or whatever you also got to realize like things will happen oh like yeah said, this is not in your control and then it's just a matter of adjusting like like being able to adjust because we would have like if if for whatever reason we we missed the flight or we got to the car rental place and they had rented the car out that they were supposed to rent us we, we would have found another place you yeah. know what i mean like you 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 just got to realize like not everything's the end of the world right yeah we, yeah, yeah we make uh mountains out of molehills or whatever all yeah. the time with our anxiety yes we do and it's and you know this i mean just the, the very first cruise my wife and i ever went on could not have started worse because the plane was so delayed that it was like we're, we're, we're going to miss the launch like that's how delayed this flight is and we can't talk we can't talk to the people the second we land our phone is blowing up the the cruise lines like we understand your your your, your flight we have a bus waiting for you you guys are amazing we go out there we are the only two people on the bus it's a giant bus that's meant to be packed with with you know cruise goers we're the only <laughs> two people they get us we go through security this this cruise liner was like waiting for us oh dude gosh. and we're running through we did the ramp as we were running up the ramp they were collapsing the ramp we walked in they closed the doors and off we went i'm like whoa <laughs> i mean the anxiety we felt like well, i don't even know what life looks like if it just takes off without us but it was like whatever let's just have some fun with this let's see what happens oh <laughs> well, you watch the boat sail away if, yeah if not but that's wow yeah yeah right. just uh able to be able to adjust i suppose is is uh, something you got to do yeah all right next uh, let's see where are we at. Uh, Ashes says, "Love this week's podcast." Okay, so at this point, this week's podcast was was like a month ago that Ashes is talking about. Um, says for the Q and A, would love to know where you guys would love to live, or even what you would have in your dream home. Oh my goodness! Uh, I feel like I've answered this before, but uh, I I really love Southern California, in particular San Diego. I I we my family and I we vacation every year there like on the like the same exact beach and we just like pick a different rental house on the beach every single year we're just like working our way up the coast a little bit and um i i i I think i could do it i think i could live on the beach and be happy i know a lot of people like say oh yeah you'd only last like a year because you get sick of the sand and and all this stuff but it's like san diego is like 70 degrees year round it feels like yeah fahrenheit i know we got worldwide listeners that don't know what fahrenheit is but um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, it is, it is beautiful there. And I've like, my dream would, and we've talked about this is be like 
to right now be sitting in a beach house looking out a big bay window yeah. at the ocean with maybe a boardwalk in front of us and people walking walking by as we're doing this podcast yeah. like that's that's like ultimate yeah I, mean? I i know I, I and see that my problem is i want it all and and i uh, first of all i, I lo- i'm the same way i love the beach i can't get sick of it i can't get sick of of i i've had a uh I was on, I went on a vacation with a bunch of friends and we had this uh, hotel room that was on the beach and I just left the window open so I could just hear the waves because I mm-hmm. just can't get sick of that noise. So I'm with you. I love it. I love walking on the beach very, very early. I love all that stuff. I also want to make sure I have a giant yard for my dogs. I love the, mm-hmm. uh, watching my dogs run around in my backyard. I just, I just, when they play and they uh, like play rough with each other and they don't fight, but when they do their thing, I just love that. Um, I, I, I got to have a pool because it means so much to my wife. You know what I mean? The fact that we have a pool, that just means the world to her. Like That's very, very important to me. And then I also really want the openness of like Colorado. I really like Colorado <laughs> and I, I want to get back into like, you know, uh, biking and stuff like that. And they just, yeah. there's so much hiking oh, trails and yes. mountain bikes. Oh yeah. And then on top of that. And seasons too, like you know, I, having seasons is nice. Yes. Yeah. But they, I also want, I, I don't, I want Florida's water because it's like the, I don't Florida beaches. The water is like, yeah. oh my goodness, it's yep. it feels like you're in Hawaii. It's just amazing. California is just freezing. The yeah, water's freezing. True. You know what I mean? But and I love to go in in the ocean. So let's see what else. I want. High roofs. I need. I gotta have high roofs. I love high roofs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a, a giant screen TV. Oh oh, here's I'm also dream home. I want a fully dedicated poker room. I love, you know, me okay. and my poker. I love poker. And and I, I just, I try to make it happen and it doesn't really work at my place because of my dogs. But I want, I would, I would love like a dedicated poker. Actually, I want a dedicated room. That's like, I, you know, the man cave stuff. I want the pool table. I want the pool. I want the poker table. Okay. I want the full, the, full scale, like almost like a sports bar. Yes, dude. Yeah. Yes. Darts, big screen yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. Boxing ring? No, I'm just. But I want. But I want. I. I to go. And, yeah. and, and, and I want to play. Is what I want to do. I just like to yeah. play. I like to. You know, my, my life. I want it to be about play. I'm a big child. <laughs> I want it all. There you go. Well, I'll just have houses everywhere, and you can bounce around. Yeah, you know? that's what I mean. That's uh, that's gonna. <laughs> so tell your friends about the podcast. All right, next one. Yeah. <laughs> Spread the word. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I need I need my poker table. So this is uh, uh from Athena G. I have an eight year old. And uh, let's see, I have an eight year old and I came to the realization a while ago that we talk about things. We don't have the goofy little conversations anymore. It's real stuff and it's interesting. Question for you. What is your best memory? Well, first of all, that's that's really cool that uh, you're having real conversations, even at a young age. Oh, yeah. Um, because I think it's a, I, I we'll get into the, the second part of this, which is your best memory. I think I have something in store, but um, the idea that that you have real talks with your kids, I think is super important. I don't know how much we got into that in parenting, in the parenting podcast that we did, but the idea that you can establish um, a comfort level, carrying real conversations with your kids early, because the older they get, the harder it is. Uh, I dealt with this where I have a teenager now that that we didn't spend a lot of time uh, having deep conversations as they grew up. And now it's hard to sit down and have those conversations because it just kind of feels awkward and it's and, and it got into a stage to where uh, they're a little more closed off to those kind of conversations so um yeah it is important it is important i'm really happy to hear that you have that with your eight-year-old keep that up yeah me too i dig that all right happiest memory are you ready you go first or i go first i can go first because I, I, you, I you might top me i don't know I, why do you go it's not it's a competition, competition. <laughs> everything's a competition with me i know i don't know why that is <laughs> So I'm like, oh, I climbed a 10 foot tower. You're like, I climbed a 100 foot I, tower. Not, Shut up. That's why I said it. I'm not trying to one up you, but I but you reminded me of a story. That's, that's yet another example of how much better than you I am. All right, you go. Um, so even though even though the video of this event exists and and from the look on my face, you couldn't tell that it was going to be uh, one of the the happiest moments or best memories I've ever had was uh, we were we were teaching at a high school we taught the, the drum line um we've mentioned this before and we got home after a, a long day you know we'd gone to full-time job and then we went to the high school and we we taught the kids and i uh, got home late i remember it was dark and i came in uh you you'd driven we'd carpool you'd driven you dropped me off so i don't think you were there for this but open the front door and there's like 
conf- like uh, streamers and balloons and like a camera in my face. It's my wife. <laughs> and there's like a sign that says we're pregnant. And I was like in shock. Wow. Right. I was in shock. But as it sunk in, it was like. Oh, here we go. And this is something we'd wanted. You know, we had one. Mm-hmm. Yes, we, we started early, but it was something we had we had wanted. We'd been trying for. And it was like, this is it. Like, this is it. We're starting our we're starting our family together. And I, I knew like everything was going to change from then on. And I was I was in for it. Like I was loving it. That's uh, awesome, dude. That is really awesome. Um. Oh, boy, this is a hard one. This is because I, I have a I've very fortunate person. I've had a great life. I've got a lot of wonderful memories. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. I, let me think. I, I Honestly, I'm going to say that, ah, I you know, so much of my life was about my, my daughter's softball. And uh, uh, this one, this is a weird one. So let me think. <laughs> I, this, I, the, the reason I'm. Can we, can we just say. So let me just say this. I know you're listening right now, buddy. And so I'm, I'm, I got to do this and I love you. I love you. So just forgive me that this is one of my best memories. Okay. So my daughter's softball career growing up, she became really close with, um, a a friend of hers who's a pitcher and my daughter's a catcher. This girl's a pitcher. They were on club teams together, but they didn't go to the same schools. Right. And so it was kind of neat that when they were in, you know, separate junior highs, anytime they faced each other was going to be kind of neat. And, um, it, 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 it always went in the direction of my daughter's team. They won every time. Now it was hard for this other girls it, it, in her defense. My daughter's team, they went undefeated both seventh grade and eighth grade. My, my daughter and, and her team went undefeated, which was pretty cool. So her friend never got to, you know, best her, which is fine. And then we move into uh, high school and they're at different high schools. And now here they are facing each other and, and my daughter's team wins again. And now that here they are facing themselves, facing each other for the second time that year, and it's not looking good. Like, I don't know what happened, but there was, my daughter's team was losing by like eight runs. Like they were just stomping on us, right? So the other girl's parents, whom I'm very close friends with, and I love them very much. The dad's the one who's listening right now. And I love you, buddy. I love you, but this is a fun story. So let me have my moment. Uh, they are, uh, they're starting to like heckle me a little bit. And then the, the, the mom is, is starting to heckle me. Right. And she deserves like, someone years for this. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not handling it well. I'm just like, you, we're not friends right now. You go to your side. We'll talk later. You know, <laughs> she's like, what? Come on. You know, this is like, it's, we haven't won yet. I'm like, I understand that, but I want, I don't want you to win ever. And I was just like, this is my daughter's team. Jeez. I don't want you to win ever. So next thing you know, we start to make a little bit of a comeback. And uh, they decide to um, put her their their daughter out on on the mound to to tie it up. She's a great pitcher. Uh, the problem is, and now this is I'm I am going to defend her again. The problem is, my daughter has caught thousands of balls for her as the catcher. She knows her too well. They should never pin them to, uh, against each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're down by two runs. There's two on. And my daughter, and, and it's the it's the uh, it's the bottom of the final inning. Now I say final inning because it doesn't cut quite where it's a timed thing, yeah. but it's it's clearly the bottom of the final inning. And there's two on, and uh, uh, and we're down by two. And my daughter comes up to bat, and and first pitch strike. I'm like, oh boy, here it goes. Second pitch, I think I think the second pitch she hit foul, so that's strike two. I think if, if I'm remembering it, all that means nothing because the third pitch walk off home run. Wow. So so we're down by two. There's two on. She hits it and the second it comes off the bat, the umpire stands up, does a little swirly with his finger and just starts to take all his gear off. They know where that ball's going. It was like way over the fence. And so I see my daughter go around the bases and uh the whole team comes out and you know surrounds and 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 they were just so pumped up, dude. And and she comes in and they just jumped on her, smacked her helmet and just went nuts. And meanwhile, the only heartbreaking thing is that their daughter is kind of like my daughter too. I watch yeah. her just hang her head and walk off. That part did Aww. suck. I, I, I made it, buddy. That part was rough. But uh, my daughter hitting that walk off was amazing. You know what's also amazing is that another dad who's another mutual friend of all of us when my daughter walked up to the plate, he looked at the score, looked at the bases, and he, this guy used to actually pitch for the Rockies, and he leaned into me, he's all, it's a walk-off. And I'm like, dude, don't say that. He goes, it's a walk-off. Because he knows her very, he used yeah. to coach her, and he's like, this is a walk-off. And that's exactly what happened, dude. <laughs> oh! And I got, and I, that was probably, I mean, what a weird thing to be your favorite memory, but it was because just the, the pride you feel, you yeah. know what I mean? It was just crazy. Yeah, after all the hard work she put in, and everything to have those experiences makes it all worth it. Yeah, it was nuts. That's crazy. 
All right, what question are we? We're, oh, is it me or uh, you? You're reading. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's, one underneath Athena. Karen Miller or Kareen Miller Mueller. I can't. I Mueller. Can't. I'm, I'm good with Mueller. names. Good with names. Mueller. Uh, question that I want to ask: Have you ever doubted your passions? Like for the drums or YouTube, et cetera. I'm in that situation where I don't really know, and we'd love seeing you guys talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> go. Yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you start. But I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent, right? Yeah. And, and so for drumming, I love drumming. I really, really do. And there was a time when I was, you know, whatever, ranked number one in the state. But that was in high school, and it was for a specific type of drumming, and that was neat, right? But I'm not, a, I'm, I've never been a natural drummer. It's always been incredibly hard work because I know what good is, right? You, you, you know it is, you've also had the good fortune of drumming with some of the best in the world. And right. you know the difference between, it's not like they don't work hard, but it's one of those things where it's like, you were like, there actually is such a thing as natural talent right. and I'm surrounded by it. And as I kept going up in that world, I was like, I, I don't want to, this sucks. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, I'm not, I'm not naturally good. I got to work way harder than these people. And that kind of sucks. So I doubted it the whole entire time. When it comes to the YouTube, and yes, of course, all I do is doubt. It's been 10 years, I can't break 50,000 subs. Like, I, 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 I understand all I do is is doubt that, you know? But in terms of if I enjoy it, I don't I don't ever uh, doubt that. I do wonder if it's, if I'm on the wrong set of rails and I, and I missed because I was supposed to be a director or an actor or something. And I got, I tried to go to something that kind of resembled it by you. I mean, I don't really know. So these mm -hmm. go through my head. So it's not just that I doubt my own uh, passions, it's that I, 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 I vehemently doubt my own passions and it's, yeah. it's it can be crippling at times. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For me, I mean, it's something we talk about all the time is imposter syndrome. I feel like, yeah. uh, with drumming, I had it, you know, I felt like I, a, a lot of, you know, I, I am blessed to, to be naturally like good at a lot of different things, you know, but it's kind of like the Jack of all trades, master of none type thing to where if I want to be great and, and stand on a, on a drum line of, of greatness, that means I have to work really, really hard yeah. to even uh, make the end of the snare line. You yeah. Know what I mean, um, and so I've always, and then the whole time I've wondered if uh, the whole time I'm wondering if, if I'm the tick, they'd call it, you know, the, the guy that's the guy that's, that's making the, the, what they call dirty, the, the one that's screwing up all the time yeah. and that I should just be cut. You know, you the whole time you're just worried about that, that, yep. that I'm the one that shouldn't even be there. And, uh, and the same thing with, with YouTube space. I feel that's from time to time. Yeah. I've had a, a lot of success. Some of it was just being in the right place at the right time and, uh, taking advantage of, of situations situations that came my way but um and a lot of it was through hard work but i also felt like i'm not the naturally talented you know like some of these some of these people i work with just have it you know what i mean yeah. like you look at you look at mumbo you look at green you look at these guys and they're just naturally just flows and they're super talented super smart super charismatic and funny um and so i'm like i don't know if i have that but i'm gonna work hard i'm gonna work hard to to, to try to uh, allow myself to to stand next to them you yeah. know um but i'll never really fully feel like i i'm i i belong because imposter syndrome is still very real so yeah doubt is doubt is constant oh, yeah. and the only thing i can do is realize that i'm just gonna keep working hard for what i want you know and and i'll just i'll outwork the doubt yeah you well know. that's what the um oh boy i'm gonna mess up this uh this phrase but it's such a beautiful one it's that hard work will always outperform oh i'm sorry hard work will always outperform talent that doesn't work hard or something to that effect like what is it hard work it's something like that hard work the, the bottom line is that even when people are naturally talented the hard work the people who put it in there there's they're gonna overtake them oh and it's, it's, it's so bizarre. You see it all the time. You know what I mean? It, it, because when it comes down to it, the capacity of the human is, is so vast that when you really dedicate, it doesn't matter that, that maybe you're not a natural, you can really, really get some legs. And then every once in a while you have somebody who's very naturally good at something and a hard worker. And yeah. that's, I, I talked about that with you Crushing a lot. It. And they're just like, you know, that's, but there was a gentleman, Frank Rosali was a drummer at NAU many years ago. This dude worked hard and he was born for this. Yeah. And he is legitimately, he like a savant, oh my yeah. God, this guy's <laughs> drumming was so good, yeah. dude. And and I was, I remember him just being in awe of him, but that's, you know, you, you get those, those icons every once in a while, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. Tri wait, wait, is it Tish? Tish B. It says, hi. What's your question? Just says, hi. Just says hi. <laughs> no, kidding. there's a lot to it. There's a, there's a it, it says, funnily enough, 
I was going to ask you guys uh, what, what you would do or say about my daughter asking to play drums. She's 11. Today's podcast definitely answered that question. However, if you have any helpful nuggets of wisdom that you didn't cover, I would love to hear them on this subject. Uh, money will be an issue related to something else. Not to not going to go into it here, she says. Uh, but I have a couple of ideas that we're looking into. Thanks, Imp and Skiz, for these. I love listening to all your stories. Okay, first of all, to Tish, I'm so sorry it took so long to get back to you on this. We didn't know we were going to have to split up that first Q&A. Uh, the way we did. Um, second of all, so yeah, I, I mean, I have my own advice on how to get started on on drumming. You know, it's not oh, go go find the money and buy a big drum set. That's not what this is. Um, there's the the beauty about being a drummer is that the whole world is a drum set, right? There's an entire group based on this called Stomp that all they did yeah. was just drum with garbage, right? <laughs> yep. There's I, I'm looking around the studio right now. I see several things. I'm like, I could I could actually set up a little makeshift, you know, drum drum set here. But here's the deal. Uh, what needs to happen and is 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 some drumsticks and a drum pad. And there's somebody that's in, in somewhere in your vicinity, somewhere in, somebody in your proximity that knows the the fundamentals of what it is to hold a drumstick, the difference between legato and staccato to give some, um, to understand what stick control is. There's somebody out there who knows that. To, the, the key is to start as fundamental as possible and master those rudiments. Yeah. This, this, this from this cost, no, this actually does cost next to nothing. It's, it's drumsticks and a, and a drum pad. We're talking about maybe a $30 budget here, right? Mm -hmm. This is a situation to where just to get started and a couple things end up happening. You end up finding, um, uh, um, you, you set up an arena to where if they lean into this, if they get those fundamentals, it is so impactful for the future. It is so, imp I'm not a very good drum set drummer, but man, can I look good because my hands are so fast because I've got the rudiments. Mm -hmm. So do you, you know what I mean? Like we can do things on the hi-hat alone right. that drummers with far more groove and funk than we have can't do because they don't have that that discipline, right? That's where the drum pad comes in. You get very good at it. Then, then don't even worry about a drum set. Just add some garbage understand the difference between playing on the edge of the drum set or the end edge of the drum pad, as opposed to the middle of the drum pad and hear those different noises. You're like, you'll, you'll understand that there's so much more to drumming than a crash cymbal and a kick drum and a snare in a, it's, yeah. there's so much more to it that can be accomplished with next to nothing. We're I'm drumming with my hands all the time. Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is like, just sitting at your desk, you can work on, uh, you know, being able to, have syncopation and and uh have each limb doing something different and get yeah. that start to get the feel for how that works because that's yep. that's the hard part about it too um but yeah you don't even need drums to do that and also this 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 person tish she submitted this question on our youtube video which means access to the internet and, and youtube which means access to drum lessons that are yeah. absolutely free yeah because i'm sure there's plenty on youtube yeah uh, so yeah utilize utilize the internet and free resources best you can those will give those will provide a lot of great examples and and exercises to do but there there is something to be said for you if you can get somebody who knows even the slightest bit there needs like there's when I oh yeah you got to touch yeah you know, private, put your finger here pinch, private lessons are yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, if you can because you got to have that that somebody actually looking and seeing how your how your form is and everything yep you know because you can look at you can look at a video and be like I think I'm I think I'm doing it like that and be completely wrong so yeah uh, yeah if you can too but I know money was 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 tight there so yep uh, next questions from Jolly Cynic Impulse I'm a fan of your wife's jewelry not a planter plug. But thank you anyway. Uh, do you have any of her pieces on your studio shelves? Uh, so before I get to the second part of the question, I will say, no, I don't. You know, um, it's jewelry. It's fairly small. I'm not sure it would really show on the on the shelves. But uh, we do have some really cool stuff on the shelves. Maybe I'll I need, I need to see. I need to see if I get something up there. Just yeah. to, just just a little piece of, of my wife's you know jewelry business up there would be cool. I'm not sure if you'd see it on camera or not, but it's a good question. And uh, I'm glad you like the jewelry. She's working real hard with that that business of hers. Second part was for Skiz though. And Skiz, outside of film or, or TV, uh, which you give him examples of, especially last week with the, the movie podcast, uh, what makes you laugh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who makes you laugh? Oh um, yeah, or who? Uh, that's a great question. So yeah, outside of film and TV, um, honestly, my, my, my brothers make me laugh. My specifically, like honestly, my oldest brother is like super funny. He's, he, he really is. And I don't think he knows it. <laughs> he's just, he's super, the best kind of funny. Isn't it really he? is, trying. dude. He cracks me right? up, man. He's, he, he just has this ability. Like his, he's super witty and, and I don't know. It, it makes me very proud of him because, uh, it's, 
he does he's just so natural he just he makes me laugh um my buddy paul is quite literally he's the funniest person i know he just is he he is so fun i've known him a long time and in my uh um story time with schizzle man called scaring paul that's the paul i'm talking about mm-hmm. this guy is he is he is the funniest person I know. I, I love him so much. He's so funny, and my wife makes me laugh a lot too. She's she can be really funny at times, and almost never is it what she's trying to be. She's, uh, yeah, it's it's that it's, she does things like like when she didn't know I was listening, and my my dog Kevin Bubbles Malone it would she thought she was just in the room with him, and when she said Kevin, I knight you. Sir Bubble Bear. Like, for so, like, I just could not stop laughing. It was like, first of all, the name is hilarious. Second of all, they, you're the only one in the room with the dog right now. You're straight <laughs> up talking to the dog. And I do it, too, so I can't give her any static for that. Um, I would just say outside of, let me look at this. Real yeah, quick. outside of film and, and TV. In, in TV. Yeah, so I, we, I can't talk about the fact that ZF is, like... Is that YouTube? Is that too close to TV? Yeah. That guy is so funny. That works. It's, he's a friend. Yeah, he's a friend. He's a good friend. Uh, he's super funny. Uh, uh, so many of my friends, you know, and honestly, like my go, my my uh, my guys trip with all those dudes, like every one of them is just so funny in their own right. I, I'm not going to say all their names right now, but they are, you know, these are these are these are my guys, you know, and I, and I love them so much, and they're all so funny it's why it's why we've stuck together all these one of the reasons is because we all just know what to do to make each other bring to bring each other tears with laughter you know so it's friends and stuff (laughs) that was a fun one yeah yeah very good okay now we're moving on to blue lists uh love the podcast what was the podcast we did I'm, I don't remember? ever remember the podcast we did before the q a before q a we did maybe it was parenting I, I feel like it may have been. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Love the podcast. Just want to ask, again, this is from Blue List. Love the podcast. Just want to ask uh, for the both of you, what is your top f- top five favorite bands or artists? What's your top five favorite albums or songs? Now, this is interesting because we just did a movie one and yeah. we both were like, we don't, we don't like really doing, do that. We don't like yeah. doing top fives. Not that we don't like to. It's that it's, it's, well, it's, it's just hard. really hard after the, first, after the first couple ones. And I think actually our, our number ones are different because I've heard you say, Many times, like your number one, absolute number one is Tool. Oh yeah, but my absolute number one is Dave Matthews Band. Okay, so but yeah. then but then I but then I might then I might flip because like my second would be Tool. Yeah, you know. But that's as far as I go as far as ordering. Yeah, you know. Well, keep going, keep going through your list, and I'll go through. Oh, I don't have I don't have five to to say. That's it. I only listen to Tool and Dave <laughs> Matthews. Band. I top to bottom album. Yeah. I, I've been I've been really into listening to discographies lately from the the first published album of of an artist to the to the end i think the last one i i went through was panic at the disco which yeah, i dude, really really so enjoyed good. really so enjoyed good. uh there was a couple songs that didn't quite hit for right? me yep. but the overall experience from the very first song they ever released to the latest one um was just a oops, hit the mics uh just a joyful experience I, I really liked listening to that so but i don't know if i'd put them in my top five honestly like i haven't thought about I haven't thought about like every band I've ever listened to and like try to figure out like who's after Dave Matthews and Tool. Yeah. Because, like anytime I go to listen to music, I just like I just gravitate directly to them. I mean, there's a ton of other ones we could put in there, maybe like Offspring. Uh, oh, I love Offspring, uh, dude. I, I can't even think. I of... love Sum 41. I love Green Day. Oh, yeah. I, 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 Blink 182. I, I mean, uh, Deftones, <laughs> Corn. Yeah. Uh, like it, it just. Very much a like late 90s bands were kind of my favorite. And I think the reason was because disturbed. Yeah, because I was in very much in like the concert goer scene where I liked going to um, Edge Fest is what they called it. And it was at the Peoria Sports Complex. It was near where we used to live. And every summer I would go and they would just have lineups. And it were these bands. You know, like Offspring was there. Blink-182 was there. And I got to see these bands in person. And because of that, anytime I listen to these bands now... It just brings back those memories. I've seen Tool multiple yeah. times. I've seen Dave Matthews multiple times. It's the bands that I've seen in to- in concert that like continue to touch me today, and that's why when I saw those albums, it brings back the memories of of standing in the the lawn at whatever Cricket Pavilion or whatever it was called back then, uh, with you and your wife and me and my wife just listening to Dave Matthews Band just jam. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and so yeah, that that's probably why those always come to my mind. Yeah, I said so. so 
so my number, like you said, my number one's tool and it, and it just, it's going to probably be locked in there for the rest of my life because it's the only band I've talked about this before where every band I love in, and I, I honestly think my number two is Dave Matthews. I love Dave Matthews, mm-hmm. but I don't like, I don't love all their songs. They actually, when they have songs, especially when busted stuff came out, yeah. they've got plenty of songs. I'm like, I, it's not that I don't love the songs. I don't like, I don't even like this song. And it really made me sad because I really, really, really like Dave Matthews band, but they had uh, several songs. I was like, I, I don't like this even a little bit. Tool is the only group or every single thing they've ever made. I freaking like, you know what I mean? Like I really, that is, and they just, I can go on for hours. We can have a tool podcast. (laughs) So I'm going to leave that aside. Tool's my number one. Um, Dave Matthews. I'm in also, I'm just really, really into Christina Aguilera. She is so talented. Like that voice is ridiculous. And, and when she, when she, I didn't like the earlier stuff, like, you know, the, genie in a bottle that was when somebody else was writing her stuff but then she came out with dirty and that was all her and it was such a great album such a or stripped rather such a great album like just through and through and then when she came out with back to the basics i admired it because she was going back to like early like 20s 30s um Mm -hmm. you know music uh i don't really like that music style but I, it's not, it cannot be debated as to how complex that was. And she crushed it. Like it, the talent was there. I didn't, I didn't, I li- and I liked the album. I didn't love it, but, but in terms of uh, her, her capacity as a singer, I just, it's just, she's second to none. Um, really like Panic of the Disco. I think Brendan Yuri is, I, I think he's losing his voice now. I don't know. I could be wrong there, but his, his range is just ridiculous. Um, really like a lot of Queen, but again, it's another band where it's like, there's some songs I don't like, dude, I mm-hmm. love the Beatles and there's, they have lots of songs I don't like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, but when it comes down to, uh, what, what grabs me, I, it, it, it usually see, it tends to come down to the singer. I, I, you know what I mean? It just really does. Even though, so that's why tool, I mean, I'm Danny Carey, the drummer is my favorite drummer in the world. The whole thing adds up, you know, <laughs> and, and I love uh, Maynard, but, uh, boy, that's, that's, I think, I think the other thing that's interesting about. And maybe we're not, you know, maybe this isn't unique, but you and I also like a huge variety of genres. Yeah. Like Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Eminem. Yeah. Like we go from like rap to Christina Aguilera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and, and back to the Beatles. And, and there's just, I, the only, the only thing, and I know I'm going to get a little bit hate. The only thing I've struggled with uh, genre wise is I have never really gotten like into deep into the country genre but there is there is country artists that i have liked you know yeah, like yeah. garth brooks uh, you know thunder rolls i like there are certain songs and even i hear today on the radio i'm like yeah that's a pretty cool song but i've never like really really gotten a grab on the genre but other than that like i'm like every genre i love yeah and that in country and i'm kind of the same way i never really got into it but the same thing to where there's a handful of country songs out there that i right. really do like and again going back to garth brooks he's got he's got the a large part of his catalog. I'm just like, I love oh, yeah. every team, yeah. every, every team. I had his, I actually had his album. Me like, too. Me too. It was, it was really yeah. more rock than it was country, but it was yeah. so, it was so good. Uh, but he wasn't the only one there was, there's, there's, you ever dude? one of my favorite country songs is from Trisha Yearwood. It's called, she's in love with the boy. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is like the it, it country music is much more about storytelling. Yeah. And, and I'm just not really that into the music, but the but this song I really liked, and the story was really good, and just the journey she takes you on, and she, she she flips the script on you. She makes you the dad in that one, where basically the dad does not. He thinks that this this punk that his daughter is dating is exactly that. This guy's a punk. He's not going anywhere, and blah blah blah. You deserve better, but but the mom's like, but you don't understand. She's in love with the boy. You know, that's a whole thing. And then finally, she's like, you know, my dad said the same stuff about you. You know what I mean? But but the way that the, but the that the song plays out, the lyrics play out and she tells a story, it's just so moving that you get to the end, you're like, whoa, you're like, I, I, I'm like, I feel like I just got punked the way the dad did, you know, and I, and I deserve it. Like, I have to be more lenient here. So that that's what makes country music so special is that it really does tell incredible stories. Yeah. But before we move on, I do want to say, because you mentioned it, you went into Dr. Drain stuff, Eminem is also easily yeah. one of my favorite artists. Yeah, I know. As soon as I was like, oh, if I take myself, because when I see some, a question like this and says, his favorite band i don't always think of uh of, of a rap of, artist. Like rap artists, yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah because you know, there's no there's no guitar and or drums and you know it says band slash artists yeah so, so yeah. skip that but yeah eminem eminem is definitely he's so yeah, yeah i think i could probably put him in my top five he's easily. he's like he's, there's a spot for him for he, sure. every all he did was just continue to get better and better and better to the point to where 
Are you ready for this, dude? I'm going to say something with my face. Um, we're we talking about Frank Rosali, right? Was that this podcast or last one? <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> was it, which one was it? I can't remember. I, I, I really this is what happens when we record two podcasts. We we're talking about it was remember. it was about being uh, naturally good and 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 a hard worker. I don't oh yeah, that. that's probably this one then. Yeah. Anyway, talking about Frank Rosali, <laughs> who was the drummer of uh, of of NAU. This this ties to the story. Um, when I first saw him, I was like, I, I, he was so, he's so good. It was just like, I, I can't believe when I'm looking, this guy's so good. I wish I could drum like him. The groove is unbelievable. His Latin style was so amazing. Okay. He went down as one of the best drummers I've ever seen with my own eyes. If, if not the best, then you fast forward the clock many, 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 many years. And I got to the other side and I looked him up one day on like YouTube and he was drumming in some, like in a library or something. And he was just drumming with uh, like a pair of brushes and one uh, sax player. That's it. And what they were playing together was, I'm trying to, we need to come up with a different word. It was so displeasing. Like I was like, <laughs> but, but I, but I was thinking, so I was like, the thing is I, I actually have the inside track here. I know who this guy is. All that's happening is that he's gotten so good. It's complete. It's completely over my head, him and the sax player. And, and I'm talking to, it's completely over my head. They know what they're doing and people of their caliber, they speak that language. They understand what they're doing. It's over my head. That's kind of what I saw happen a little bit with Eminem. Like he started so good and he kept getting better and better and better. And now he's doing things that I'm like, ah, uh, it's, it's so it, it's, I'm actually not understanding it so much anymore the way I used to. I used to be able to comprehend it and memorize it. But now some of the things that he's doing now are like, it's, this is like Frank Rosali. Just, you're just over my head. I just don't even, yeah, huh. I don't, you know, you're on a different level now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went through, I recently went through Eminem's, um, discography top to bottom and it, yeah, you can, you can see the style, you can hear the style change yeah. as it happens. And, uh, you know, some of it was his own personal journey with, uh, with going through rehab and stuff like that. But it's also like, he's in a completely different place now to, to where you're right. I mean, it's like, he's just, he's just, he, he's gone he's, to another level. He's been so, he, yeah. he's been self-actualized. It happened a long time ago yeah. and, and you're right. He's just on a totally, I could go off forever on him too. <laughs> God, uh, it, when we look at these list of questions, I'm like, oh yeah, that's about five minutes on that five minutes. Nope. And then suddenly we're talking about Eminem for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is my turn. Yep. Mystical twine. I think is this one whimsical, whimsical, Wh whimsical. Thank you. I, yeah. I could read. Uh, I was still on medication. Uh, anyway, <laughs> okay. I have a question. Last week you talked about stupid things when that you did when you were young. Well, that answers our other question. It does. Okay, so yeah, this the last time we did uh, or we asked for Q and A it was after the we're idiots podcast yeah. apparently. Uh, anyway, they say. I'm college age right now, and while certainly uh, I don't want to almost be getting seriously hurt or anything, I find that I tend to stay home and don't ever have adventures or anything like that. Any tips for putting yourself out there while being responsible? I love this question. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing was like, it almost goes back to the anxiety thing that we talked about before. Yeah. Was, was just, you know, get take that first step out the door. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the first challenge is to, is to step out the door. And I think the one thing... They didn't. They didn't say they're actually in college. They said they're college age. Um, but I think this still applies. Is yeah, yeah. is to try to surround yourself with with people that you have similarities with. You have something to bond over, right? Like maybe uh, you're into D and D, and you you can find a group that plays D and D or you know things like that. I think putting yourself out there for me means like finding a friendship or finding a group of friends and there's you know if you're in college there's clubs you know that you can look up there's like you, you if you're in college there's tons of clubs there's a club for everything no matter what you're into you're gonna find some yeah, a, a yeah. club for it and even if you're not in college like there are groups that exist you just gotta you just gotta uh know how to how to find them and look for people that that have something in common and then if, if you pick the right group of friends they're gonna make sure you're not being a complete idiot yeah and, yeah and yeah getting hurt right like yeah like picking your your close-knit group of friends is is, is huge because you pick the wrong group and you could go down the wrong path and uh that'd be bad if you pick the right group they're gonna watch out for you and you're gonna have a great time yeah no i can i i agree with i i think i just i almost want to say just ditto and move on but i want to expand a little bit because uh my daughter is, is she was kind of in the same boat you know she went to the other side of the nation she has to focus on her studies focus on softball focus on working out doing all that stuff and her you know her roommates they want to go out and do this and she's just like not really want to do that thing she just want to go and as a father or of a daughter you kind of want to be like oh sweet stay inside but at the same time <laughs> i want her i don't want her to look back on these uh chapters of her life and see nothing but blank pages you you need to be able to write something down but there's something to be said for the fact that 
um, whimsical is talking about like, you know, I want to do this in a smart way. That's huge. That really is. And surround yourself with, with level headed people, right. right? Put yourself out there, go get uncomfortable. And if, if they also are not interested in doing anything and you want to do something, we'll go drive it, go be the leader. Say, yeah. Hey, we're going to go ax throwing. There's an ax throwing place down the, down the way or whatever. Let's just do right. something new. Let's something, something a little bit new. And then uh, above all that, trust your instincts. And what I mean by that is, and I tell this to my, both my kids all the time is that you're going to go put yourself out there and and that's good you want to do that like i said you don't want your pages to be blank but when you walk into a party and your gut's like we shouldn't be here turn around and leave because if your gut's saying that it's right it, it's actually correct mm -hmm. trust me that you will be able to you will be able to tell the difference between i'm a little uncomfortable because i don't know these people and I don't think we should be here. And when you when you realize you shouldn't be there, do a 180 and out you go. Right. Now now you'll realize that, that you have complete control uh, of the decisions that you're making. And now you can put yourself out there a little bit more. But it's there's nothing wrong with going and getting a little bit uncomfortable. There's yeah. there's there's a ton of merit there. Yeah, I mean we talked about it just earlier with the anxiety thing. Yeah. Like like you said, it's sometimes it's like, oh, if you're with a group of friends and everybody is like, no, nah, I don't really feel like doing anything, and and you kind of do, like, be that person, be be like my wife who pulled me out the door, you yeah, know, forced me to go have fun, and then I was like, oh, thank you, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. Um. Okay. This this is uh this is the last, last question. One. Ready? Yep. This is from Blake Leisure, right? Sounds Leisure. right. Uh, what do you think about parents who were born after the year 2000? I'm getting to parenting age, but I'm so scared to even think about it. Ooh. Okay. No, yeah, the, so the year 2000 is what uh, makes me first question. 2000. <laughs> it, like, so I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> the reason that Blake put in uh, born after the year 2000 means, okay, uh, just things have maybe changed, right? Like, I, as far as I know, the average age of people becoming parents, having kids uh, for their, their first kid, is actually getting uh, later in life yeah. now than it was, uh, for instance, when we first had our kids. You know, I think I was just just about 20, 21 when we had our first kid. So right, well, and before, I mean, go go back even further. Even that younger. was that was normal. Right, that was you know what I mean. That was it was normal to have kids at that age yeah so the so then like my first question was like okay when you say getting to parenting age does that mean you're 21 or does that mean you're 30 i mean obviously details uh weren't involved in the question but i'm not sure how that how much that matters i think the the question is is like the idea of becoming a parent is is kind of scary at any yeah. age mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so um yeah getting to parenting age don't even so scared to think about it what do we think about parents who were born after the year 2000. I'm not really sure how to answer that one, to be honest. Yeah, the, I'm with you on the, the year 2000 thing. I don't I don't know how to apply any sort of relevance there other than the fact that is the world in a darker place than it once was. I don't mm. I don't think that's what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, maybe we're reading between lines a little bit on that. Maybe, and it could be. And and here's my, here's my advice to this uh, straight away to Blake. If you're scared about being a parent, you're doing it right. You should yes, be. That's a good point. You, you should. You, you're doing it <laughs> there's, right. There's no age that you're not going to be uh, uh, I, scared. I would be. I'll be honest. If if somebody said, "Yeah, I think I'm going to be. I'm going to become a parent. I'm not. I'm not too worried about it." I'd be like, "Please, please don't be a, become a parent, please." <laughs> yeah, or give it some time because that means that you're not. You're not um, aware of of what this is. The gravity of becoming a parent. Right. Also, I will say in the same breath. If you are waiting until the time you you feel completely comfortable being a parent, that time's not coming. Never come. You're never you're never completely ready. You, I mean, you may be, you can be ready in regards to I know I want this in my life, but there's no such thing as being like, oh, everything is perfectly set. The room is done. I'm financially secure. I feel good about my health. Everything is good. Me and my partner are perfect, and um, the economy is going exactly where I want it to be. Stocks are looking good. Okay, rock and roll. Let's go. It doesn't work yeah, it doesn't like work that. that. So if it's if it's something that you want to do and you 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 want this in your life, not all people want to be parents, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. But if you want to be a parent, this is something that you want, and you do feel like you're in a place to where it's manageable and you can do this, then you're you're as ready as you're going to get. Yep. You know what I mean? You're as ready as, as you're going to get. Go go. Um, if if you and your and your partner are this is the next uh, chapter that you want to open and dive into then don't wait for it to feel perfect. Just acknowledge the one and only fact that matters. You both want this now. Yeah. If you both want this now and you're ready, go, 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 go have Do some that. fun and, and get this done and, and be at peace with the fact that 
it's going to be hard. And all the things that you once thought were important are so trivial. And how you put yourself first right now, not anymore. And that's yeah. that's okay. They're yeah, gonna have fun. For that. You what? Listen to my my happiest memory was about my daughter's home run. Mm. You know, that's that your the, your perspective completely shifts. You know. Yeah. And if and if for some reason the the piece about the year after the year two thousand is alluding to uh, the whole where the world's at, I, I could tell you what. Uh, we're we're aware that the the world has issues but guess what the world's always had issues yeah, uh, yes. it, it's just we're it's it's fed to us daily now right yeah. of all the issues that are surrounding us and uh maybe in the past you know uh, when they had to etch stuff on stone the word didn't get around as fast <laughs> you know what i mean so fast, so yeah. so yeah maybe maybe that's something to you know not to downplay where we're at with no. society in the world but uh, i can tell you that you know the world's never going to be perfect so don't maybe don't feel like, oh, I'm not sure I want to bring a child into an imperfect world because, you know, the people that have had children for millennia now, they all did. Yes. Know? There's so. people having babies during the, the black plague. Right. You know what I mean? There's, there's, and like I said, this, you think that, I mean, we are, ex, we are experiencing a lot of div not, divisiveness. Now we all get that. This is not the worst it's ever been. It's nowhere close. Right. Remember the civil war? You know what I mean? Like it's the times have been, people had babies through that. You know, there's yeah. the times have, have been, it's been a roller coaster. It's no, no question. Yeah. So it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I say, I uh, would say I, I would try not to let it deter you because, um, you know, if you do want to have a, a child and, and uh, you have a chance to, to bring somebody in the world that could, could bring some positivity and start to steer the world in the direction that you're hoping for. So, yeah. and you can be the, you can be the parent to help lead that. Yep. So. All right. Another good one, man. Yeah. I, okay. So eventually we're going to have to, in a few more podcasts, let's ask for some more Q and A. Cause these okay. are, yeah, I like, I like doing all the podcasts. This might be my most fun Yeah, because it's the one I feel like I'm actually reaching out and, and touching the, the listeners. Yeah, bit. I know we want We definitely want to know what people are wanting from us. And so we're kind of a hodgepodge of a podcast that are just doing uh, whatever comes to our brain and just comes right out our mouth without too much thought. So um, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep it, keep it going. If you got questions, throw them down. We'll, we'll, start to compile a new list and when we feel like it's time to do a tackle another Q&A we will in the meantime uh, we've got a myriad of topics that we want to cover and we're looking forward to continuing this podcast each and every week yep so all right that'll do it for this one thanks for joining us once again everybody